Hey ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, you're watching CHM Tech and in this video I'm going to show you how you can wrap a texture pattern or any sort of image for that matter around an object using GIMP. Okay so if I open up GIMP you can see that I have two images ready. The first one is the image of the back of a torso which we're going to be referring to as the object for the purposes of this tutorial. And the second image I have is the Venom slash Black Spider-Man sign. And that's the image that we're actually going to be wrapping around the object. Now before you do anything, you want to make sure that the object is positioned right. This is important because the parts of the background image that are being covered by the object are going to be the ones that are going to be most prominent in the end result. So you might want to select the object layer, lower down its opacity, and using the move tool, move it around until you're happy with its position. In my particular case, I'm happy with the default position, so I'm going to undo that and continue on. Now, in order to get the background image to naturally blend in around the shape of the object, we're going to be using the displacement filter. But before we can do that, we're going to need to create a displacement map. So in order to do that, you're going to select your top layer, which is the object, and you're going to duplicate it. Now select one of those layers and move it down to the bottom. So as you can see right here, the order is object, background image, object. Then you're going to select the top layer and you're going to desaturate it by clicking on colors, desaturate and try out one of these three options which works best for you. In my case, I'm going to leave it on lightness and click OK. Now the next thing we're going to do is mess around with the contrast of this image because the displacement filter actually works better when there's more contrast. So again, you want to make sure that your top layer is selected and click on colors, levels, and then mess around with these sliders until you're happy with the results. Now there's no universal rule what you have to do here because for different images, you're going to enter different settings. So play around with these sliders until you're happy with what you see. This particular image already has a decent amount of contrast, so I'm not going to do anything too much. Once you're done, select OK. And then you want to blur out this image a bit because, again, it's going to make the displacement filter work a bit better. So you want to make sure that your top layer is selected, and then go to Filters, Blur, Gaussian Blur. For the horizontal radius, I'm going to go with 10, as well as for the vertical radius. And then I'm going to click OK. And one more thing we're going to need to do before we actually use the displacement filter is make sure that the top layer, which is our displacement map, is set to image size. So you're going to do that by right clicking on it and clicking on layer to image size. Now in my particular case, this layer is already set to image size, but there's a nice chance that yours won't be. So make sure not to skip this step because it is very important. Okay, so now our displacement map is ready so we can select the background image, which is our black Spider-Man sign. Click on filters, go all the way down to map and then select displace. Now again, I want to mention that there are really no universal settings for this. Different images will have different results based on different settings. So in this particular case, I find that the best values for X displacement as well as Y displacement is 10. For the displacement mode, I'm going to leave it on Cartesian and for edge behavior, I'm going to go with smear. Once you've entered the settings, click OK in order to apply the displacement map. Okay, so now that that's done, we can get rid of our displacement map, which is our top layer, because we don't need it anymore. Now with the top layer selected, we're going to go to Filters, Blur, and Gaussian Blur one more time, and this time for the horizontal value and the vertical value, we're going to go with 5, because we want to blur out this spider sign a bit, in order to make it a bit more natural looking. Next, you're going to select the bottom layer, which is the object, right click and say alpha to selection, select the top layer, right click, go to add layer mask, and right here you're going to select selection and say add. As you can see, that got rid of any background imagery that is outside the boundaries of our object. Now simply go to select none in order to get rid of the lines. Now that that's done, we're going to turn off this top layer for a bit. We're going to select the bottom object layer and duplicate it. With the top object layer selected, go to colors and desaturate one more time. Now again, we're going to have to mess around with the contrast here, but we're actually going to do that a bit later. For now, we're going to bring back the top layer 
make sure that the image layer is selected and not the layer mask. So with the image layer selected, click on mode and then select grain merge. For the opacity for now, you can lower it to around 70%, but don't worry too much about that right now as we're going to be messing around with it a bit later in order to adjust our end result. So as you can see right here, this is already looking pretty good, but it's very monochrome. So what we're going to do right now is select the bottom layer and bring it to the top. Make sure it's selected, go to mode, and then again, we're going to go with grain merge. And I'm going to lower the opacity until I'm happy with how it looks. Okay, so as for the method of wrapping images around objects, we're actually done. Everything we do from this point on is all adjustments. So one thing I want to do is actually mess around with the contrast with this bottom layer. So I'm going to make sure it's selected, go to colors, and then select levels, and mess around with these sliders until I'm happy with what I see. Okay, so for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to leave it at that. Once you're happy, select OK. And then if you'd like, you can mess around with the opacity of the top and middle layer in order to get the result that you want. So as for the top layer, I'm just going to bring it down just a bit. And for the middle layer, I'm actually going to leave it very close to where it already is. So that's that. One more thing for aesthetic purposes, we're going to add a background. So I'm going to create another layer, move it to the bottom. Using my bucket fill tool, I'm going to fill it with white. Then with it selected, I'm going to click on tools, go all the way down to GEGL operations, click on the drop down menu, scroll down until I see vignette, click on that. And then I'm going to mess around with these sliders until I'm happy with the result. Once we have everything down, we can click OK, and there you have it. So that would be all for this time. I really do hope that you enjoyed the video and found it useful. If you did, please leave a like and maybe share the video with your friends. For more similar content, be sure to subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching, and as always, stay strong.